Yeah. So yesterday, uh, there was some argument. I have no idea what the context was, but it was um, a couple of superstars of of the web. Heavyweights. Heavyweights. Um, Big ballers. It was uh, Big baller brand. Joanne Reed, MSNBC pundit, arguing with... Uh, our, our old friend, the baseball crank, our oh, own, our own no. baseball crank. No. Yes, and um, to me, uh, scanning the conversation that people were laughing at, it just read extremely like anime dialogue, and I couldn't get it out of my head. So there's there's something about the cadence of these two and like their statements to each other that sounds yeah. like it's been translated between two or three different languages, and then back again, exactly. And it was just and it's just kind of impotent insults going nowhere, <laughs> uh, set, like preparing for some big. You can just imagine the 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 action lines radiating yes, off of their mouths yes. as and they so said these things. It really did seem like an anime, and I thought, what if it? What if it was an anime? What if it was a bloody anime? How would that go? Uh, I think it would go a little something like this. It's my nemesis, Joy Ann Reed. No one cares who you are. The baseball disguise is superfluous. Disguise? <laughs> I've used my own name on the web for 17 years, man. <laughs> Next time, dispense with the you did X for those who did no such thing. <laughs> you jumped into my mentions uninvited, baseball. Show yourself out the same way you came in if you don't like the response. Yeah? I prefer factual accuracy, so I shall disengage from what you are offering instead. For the moment. <laughs> How can I miss you when I don't actually care that you were even here? <laughs> Did someone say tentacles? This is Kurt Eichenwald, local journalist at large. I've heard there's a big scoop about tentacles. <laughs> it's another one of our combatants. He's under the ring. Oh my god, he is here. Mecca Douthat. Everything you are doing is wrong and sinful. Desist at once! <laughs> You will not stop me from using all the birth control pills <laughs> I want, Mecha Dooth out. That's what you think. Prepare to be destroyed. I will eat them as numerously as the mice on the northern winds. <laughs> Prepare to taste my wrath and my sanctimonious prayers. Go away, baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Come ghost. Come ghost. Welcome to the show. (laughs) There's your preview right there. There's your preview. A couple years ago, I was staying downtown near Uh the Bradbury building. Oh. And I was staying in one of those old flop houses that have been turned into a boutique hotel. Yeah. And I remember thinking, and I slept on the floor in one of them. And then the next day, I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, where's that hotel where that lady went into the cistern? And then I found out it was the one I was in. And and that (laughs) hotel, what is its name? Has a really fucked up history. Yeah, a Richard lot Ramirez of stayed bad there. stuff has, ha- huh? Richard Ramirez lived there for a oh, bit. Jesus, yeah, yeah, but like really bad things have gone down yeah. in that hotel. But I remember being like, "Oh, I want to see it. It's so cool." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, wait a minute, they changed its name. That's where I slept last night. <laughs> I hadn't even been aware of it. The water did not taste." So weird. you showered? I might have. It, yes, oh my God. with some uh, with some oh. backpacker in there. That's the gotcha. that's the beginning of a of a really bad direct to DVD Canadian <laughs> Death horror film. Death Shower. Death Shower. <laughs> well, the Ace Hotel, as as boutique as it is, was was very much a flop house. Yeah. And when I the first time I stayed there, the the ba- it is so much like a um, uh, a supermax cell that yeah. the rooms because the bathroom is right there and the and I was like, why is the Bathroom, they go, oh, none of those rooms had bathroom. It was all like one big bathroom. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, we had to change it to make it a hotel. Yeah. That's when like, America was like more together, when we all had to use the same bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we all squatted over the what same hole. Yeah. <laughs> when a bunch of rough trade drifters all lived and, yeah. had to yeah. piss, and had to wait in line to piss. That was, yeah, a, that was you, the way. At night, you would sleep on a bench with a string across you to keep it from falling forward. <laughs> yeah. In the morning, they would just cut that, yep. rise yeah, that was, and shine. That was Obama's speech in 2004 at the DNC. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be clear. 
uh, mm-hmm. Rent Boys, <laughs> uh, <laughs> classic style hobos, yeah. leather daddies, all sharing the same bathroom. Yeah. There's no red or blue America. Yep. Hubert mm. Selby showed us the way, and that's where I want to take it. <laughs> a lot of uh, repressed, angry, gay men. And, uh, and, and uh, Martin Luther King uh, yeah. had a dream. I yeah. have a <laughs> requiem for <laughs> <laughs> And I will answer the question, who killed Teddy Bear? We will find out. Sal Mineo will dance in a half shirt. I want an America that's equal parts Ronald Reagan to Tom Finland. <laughs> um, that's a good intro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, should, uh, I should probably just uh, start the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's Chapo Trap House. Uh, we're now, I think this is actually... The earliest episode we've ever Absolutely. recorded. Easily. Easily, Easily. the earliest. Yeah, well, we did guys, not get into podcasting to get up at 9. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. man. I'm sorry, you, you supermodels. I had to rouse you out of bed before noon. But, <laughs> but this was the uh, only, literally the only time I can do this. Oh, it's we very so, much appreciate yeah. it. I am moving and getting married in 28 days. Oh my so God. I could not Mazel have Mazel more. Mazel Thank you. Yeah. Wow. On the move? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I could not be more. I've never been. I'm. I'm so... Stressed out that I'm actually what I'm worried is when I get beyond this level of stress, is it going to be like a weird drug come down? Because the stress is now, now I'm just used to this. Yeah, I, I can relate, Pat. And I moved, and then two months later, I had to, you know, buy a PS4 and figure out like what oh, the controls dude. are like on the new DualShock. Like, yeah. your whole life. I'm still like, I'm still recovering from it. Why don't it's, hey, it's like life goes on, you know? Why you and I go sit in that couch, let him lie down? <laughs> <laughs> this is really, this isn't cool. So. Well, uh, in case you hadn't figured it out already, the uh, the reason for the early episode is a uh, very special guest, star of the silver screen, television, <laughs> stage, <laughs> and now author? our podcast. Yeah, author, author. Thank you. Author of Motivational the speaker, entrepreneur, <laughs> <laughs> CEO. CEO mm-hmm. at me. Yeah. Boss at me. Men's rights attorney. <laughs> <laughs> OT level three, clear. <laughs> level three, yep. Got all Pat- clear. Patton Oswalt. Thanks, guys. Patton, and thanks I for joining this- us. This show, weirdly enough, this show and you must remember this are my two sanity lifelines every week oh, because that's cool. it, you guys are embracing the insanity of right now. And then you must remember this is a show that says, but things were always actually this screwed up. So don't just dis- like, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. people look back at oh, the 40. No, it was off. It oh, was God. chaos. You need context. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was amazing that stuff didn't get blown up back then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Things are actually weirdly better in terms of control based on back then. Think of the people that were in charge of nukes and stuff and what they believed. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, Kurt LeMay. My God. He thought that nuclear weapons were actually good for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he said, he had a speech, and this was when he was running for uh, vice president as, as uh, George Wallace's VP pick in 68. He said, if you go to the Bikini Atoll and you go to these places where we did tests, you will see an amazing proliferation of, of flora and fauna <laughs> as a direct result of the nuclear exposure. <laughs> Amazing proliferation of kaijus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Anyone who watches Ghidra, the three-headed monster, <laughs> will know that. It's funny how no one can actually tag his argument. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's still out. Yeah, it was a lot of ad hominem. Oh, bombs away with Curtis LeMay. Nice ad hominem. Yeah. I mean, not addressing my arguments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then was cool because uh, 103% of people like Drunk Drove Oh like, yeah, yeah. The they drug, the drug children was with amazing. DDT just to make yeah. a point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. threw lawn darts at their kids. Uh, took caffeine pills so they could have more affairs. The CIA and, was yeah. paid to just give random people C- uh, LSD and see what happened. Yeah, yeah. everything <laughs> had lead in it. Everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everything had lead. Everything had a tiny um, piece on it that would shoot on a spring and go down someone's throat. It was all, it was just a gallery of death traps. That was America until yeah. about the 90s, basically. Yeah, yeah. the most popular toy for uh, kids who wanted to play uh, like Settlers or uh, or Cowboys and Indians was just an actual working musket. Yeah. <laughs> was, well, no, they did have, um, I think, they, I, I remember a toy where it was pretty much a working bow and arrow. Yes. And that what they didn't dull the t- It was just... No, yeah, that's what happened to uh, Ralph Sofaretto's kid, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and also, not only people were drunk driving, drunk driving was a, a funny scene in movies over and over again. <laughs> Hooper, Bad News Bears. Bad News Bears, he's, dr- he's drunk 
driving kids in a convertible. No one's belted. <laughs> and he's just, and you're like, ah, this guy's hilarious. Yeah, and he's so drunk. And it's like, it's not funny. It's cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's the cool guy. Yeah. yeah oh, there's yeah. a. There's a movie called If You Could See What I Hear with Mark Singer. He plays a blind <laughs> musician, and there's a scene where he's blind, and he's drunk, and he and his friend, his, um, <laughs> he has a friend um, named, uh, his, I, I, all I know is his last name is Sly, and he smokes a pipe because he's this crazy psychic. <laughs> And he's driving his friends around, and he's drunk, but he's also blind. <laughs> and it's like it's funny. It's like See, a those funny, two things. Funny. I think those things would double. Yeah, thank you. Those mad. things would cancel each other yep. out, and you'd actually be a perfect driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a Stevie yeah. Wonder, but just yeah. science. We would just get blind people drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could find the God molecule. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, we're this is a this is a good segue from the the insanity of of yesteryear. Yes. To the insanity of the present moment, because th- th- this is a this is a big thing we want to discuss with you. I mean, this is a <laughs> Sorry, this is a story. Yes, this is I'm a story. In my ETA. Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> this is a story. This is like sort of breaking news that we were following intensely yesterday. We've like, been as, covering this for the past twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, we've been paying close attention to this story because. I think in a lot of ways it does kind of represent a thesis statement about like everything we've been talking about yes. over the last it, it is, 150 it's episodes. It's like the, being or the so. guy in PCU when when uh, Br- Bridge Too Far comes on, <laughs> <laughs> and he can stop watching TV because the thesis has been proved. Okay, wow, and, uh, nice poll. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's a classic. <laughs> 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 it was the last time that uh, Jeremy Piven didn't have hair in a movie where he played a high a college uh, right. a, a college like sophomore. It was amazing. Oh my god! Yeah, it yeah. was weird. We were all just supposed to forget about that. But uh, no, the, the the story that we've been following that we want to talk about is now become known as Szechuan Gate. Yes, Patton, have you been following? Are you familiar with this? I. You know what? I love that now Twitter lets you piece things together you can reverse engineer it from the haiku yep. of what's trending <laughs> and so what i what i've and may and correct me if i'm wrong uh rick and morty mentioned a chezwan sauce that yep. then people demanded from mcdonald's and mcdonald's flippantly said oh we don't have it and then it's caused a huge okay no, no, yeah. it was literally so number what, one trending topic here's what, sauce. Happened. here's what happened well, yeah. you know what happened in the episode in the <coughs> premiere episode for this season which was i am so behind on all my yeah. tv right well, now everybody was so crazy because it was, it was guys you know I'm, I'm getting married and i'm moving <laughs> and my uh <laughs> fiance to, she's pretty you know, amazing she, you don't uh, have time to watch your shows i don't have time to watch your stories that's, that's true love this is what I'm women behind. do to you it's it's what they do to you. It is what they, you know what? They, they, don't, they don't just suck your biological essence. <laughs> it's also your cultural essence. Oh my so God, Dave finally, Sim was right. When you, when you finally get around to watching it, you're not going to be able to share memes with your friends because oh, they're all going to be well past yeah. oh, man. That's what love does to you, man. So I, in the first Patton, episode, by not watching, you're getting dumber. Because <laughs> that show is smart. <laughs> and you learn from it. And if yeah. you don't watch it, you don't know things. So but tell me what happened. in the first episode, they're, they met, uh, Rick mentions this Szechuan dipping sauce that was in that was a promotional for uh, item for Mulan in 1997. Right, uh, and it was uh, like basically a sweet and sour dipping sauce. And he says it was delicious, Morty, and they don't make it anymore. And at the end of the episode, he calls back to it and goes, "My mission for this season, Marty, is to get back get that Szechuan sauce. I love it; it's the best." Parenthetically, it was not mentioned the rest of the season. It was right. a joke, yeah. but. The fans of the show, tethered to reality as they are, <laughs> tightly feet planted firmly on the ground, uh, decided that they really wanted this sauce that all, most of them, all of them were too young to have ever had themselves. They weren't right. having real nostalgic yearnings for it. <coughs> the cartoon man told them it was good. The majority of them were born yeah. after Moreover, the sauce. like the function of the joke was that this is an extremely arbitrary exactly. and esoteric like the very that's joke. The joke is it's, this is not worth playing your feet about. The joke is this is not worth caring about. Right. But they're like, uh, actually, I'm a genius who watches Rick and Marty, and I understand the Straussian subtext, <laughs> which is that <laughs> it's actually the best food ever made, and I demand it. And so just, I guess some idiot, actually somebody in my DMs claims they know the guy who had this idea, who is going to be fired tomorrow, uh, (laughs) thought, hey, it'd be fun if we just put out some limited run, give selected stores like 20 packets and some posters and have a fun little promotion. But when people found out that limit, certain stores were going to have actual Szechuan sauce, they bum-rushed every location. There were two-hour lines all over the place. A lot of the stores said they didn't have it. A lot of the stores, they ran out immediately. And so there were hundreds and thousands of insanely pissed-off nerds screaming about how McDonald's 
did not get them the Szechuan sauce that they had been promised. Never get between a virgin and their condiments. No. Yeah. People, <laughs> people were fighting. The police were called the police at were called several, several locations, locations to Look. guard the McDonald's. Yes. If they had more upper body strength, that could have been a real threat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that would be, that is going to be a Red October. But <laughs> no, I think it will be because this is the real revelation I had about this is that, so you're a young Subject of late capitalism, it doesn't work for you in any meaningful way. Your life is shit. You have three right. or four awful part-time jobs. You have no health insurance. You have half a million dollars in uh, unsecured uh, uh, student loan debt. That you'll never pay off. You have no future in any meaningful sense. The, the, all of the avenues that you've been brought up to believe were going to lead to <coughs> prosperity and stability in your life, gone. But the one thing that late capitalism promise is that every stupid, shitty, nostalgic or faux nostalgic yes. indulgence you can have is at yours at your fingertips. And if it, my life is a fucking neoliberal hell, but I can't even get a fucking cup of Szechuan sauce? Yeah, exactly. Why the fuck am I still allowing the system to control me? We yeah. should burn it to the fucking ground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, as Virgil pointed out, there were, there were several incidents of police being called to guard the McDonald's and break up fights over the and like you know just pressed up against the glass like dawn of the dead yeah, you know yeah. just like, <laughs> like ooh. But, you know it, the thing is about, like you know the riot police like firing those like beanbag shotgun <laughs> shell rounds at like you know way it's sort of like you know death wave style attacks on the Szechuan sauce but it was like as Matt was saying, it's also like a real lesson in artificial scarcity because they only gave like 20 packets of Szechuan yep. sauce to each location and people have found now like locations are just like we never got the Szechuan sauce. People were pointing out a lot of this stuff is ending up like on a secondary market being sold for like seven hundred and fifty dollars. If you were <laughs> minimal <laughs> <at> McDonald's, <laughs> yeah. and you see five thousand nerds outside your door for a small packet of these things, you can do the math. Oh yeah, and yeah, be yeah. like, yeah, they're gone, or we didn't get them. Right, and now they're in the. I just love the fact that in a couple of months there's going to be some new employee at McDonald's and there'll be a like a lunch rush on a Friday and then at around 2.15 he'll like turn to his manager and go man that Friday lunch rush is crazy and then the, it'll be like the 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 the, the night watch guy <laughs> they tell you about the show's going so thing. it'll be that weird you know nothing cold, John howling Snow. Way, like it was a couple of months ago. <laughs> My picture is Sam Elliott type. Yeah, exactly. Getting wistful. Yeah, this, yes, it'll be a Sam Elliott. <laughs> Let me explain something they to were, you. There were hundreds of them. <laughs> Nerds like you never seen. A lot of them were dressed up like their favorite cartoon show. Yeah. They had blue hair. They had was, scientific coats for some reason. That was the one day that I prayed to God and also was convinced he didn't exist. <laughs> I actually, I, I thought I was as depressed as I was going to get just watching the footage of these people getting mad and freaking out on Twitter and yelling. And the people talking about how many hours they'd driven. People, somebody drove six yeah, no, hours, no, no, six hours from Canada. No, this and, is, and, this is the, I, the, uh, the... Somebody pointed this out and it really just put me into a deeper freeze of depression is, okay, yeah, you spent six hours to get to this place. You waited in line for two hours. That sounds pathetic, but what the fuck else were these people going to be doing? Yeah, like, no, exactly. Oh, no, I, I, now I'm not. All that time I could have been on the Rick and Morty subreddit explaining how Rick is actually an objectivist. Oh, my God. Is that how they're going to control people in, in, in late capitalism? In the, it, it just give them nostalgic missions? Yes. To, yeah. to um, it's like, distract oh, them from the People are getting pissed about how like they can't pay for literally anything and they have their I mean isn't mission, that kind of already happening though like have you been to a movie theater l lately yeah, like that's, that's just all we're just watching very terrible this is reboot, but, like, that, but like we it, can, one so, thing to give people nothing but nostalgia but yeah the next step is giving them little treasure hunts no, here, here's my idea the US government like Trump Care can create like an actual like ancient pirate ship in a pirate cove like in Goonies and be like the healthcare is there and seven lucky Americans if they go on the quest can find it and get covered well it is it is weird how when it, when someone is president there is a thing that that person affects the zeitgeist. So when Nixon was president, all of our films and TV Par were very yeah. paranoid. Yeah, paranoid. And then when uh, Reagan was, it was very patriotic, yeah. Rambo. Bush, it was all torture porn. Torture, torture, yeah. torture. Yeah. Tor not just torture porn, heroic torture, yes. 24 and stuff like that. And now I'm noticing, and, and this hasn't happened yet, but not in a big way, but I just I saw the Florida Project a couple weeks ago. I saw Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine. Well, I'm looking forward and to so, that. One. And these are two totally different. Um, the Florida Project is this b gorgeous neo realistic film. Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine is a action gritty, but both of them very much address 
people being hopeless under late capitalism and having literally nothing to live for. And that motivates the plot because it's so it's so inescapable what you're seeing people are going through. I think that that is going to start leaking into our pop culture. There, there will be a summer blockbuster where the plot is about someone that I, I have nothing to lose. Let's just go do this. And that will spur the action. It won't, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it won't be these international globe trotters. trotters. It'll be somebody going, you know, I, I spent my welfare check for this month's worth of food and then something happened and now I got, you know, people can, I'm telling you, it's just, I'm yeah, seeing it leak into related, everywhere. It's going to be the only relatable <laughs> heroic motive for people anymore. It was, I think it was one of the reasons that really um, people grabbed on to Stranger Things. There's a, there's a, uh, a as much of, uh, again, the 80s nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. That scene at the beginning where Winona Ryder is negotiating with her boss, like, if you can give me one week advance, then I can keep the, then I, and, and I think people are doing that so much now that I think that pulled a lot of people into the reality of the show. The fact that they did the one thing that, Stephen King does, which I he really understands the economics of living on nothing, yes. and that's a part of the plot, and it makes the horror seem that much yeah. more real. And we're past the point where, because you, you know, the big joke for for films and TV for you know a generation is, but what the fuck do these people do for work? How do they have these houses? Like they're just hanging around these big houses and they yeah. have no means of yeah. support. And what people the are like the nah, don't. wife and the big house yeah, and yeah. everything. People yeah. just there's no more. You can't accept that anymore. Oh yeah, the, it, it, the Simpsons at least acknowledged much. it though. Oh, with, they, and they acknowledge the, it right from the yeah, get go. Yeah. Yeah. And and also that as 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 whimsical and it's a great show, but as whimsical a show as Crazy Ex Girlfriend acknowledged the fact that. In mid first season, oh, you know, you're broke. <laughs> like all this money you saved, and then you've gone to um, uh, say it, um, wherever she moved to, to um, where the f- wait, god damn. I to um, West Covino. She moved to West Covino, <laughs> and in midway first season, they really because what they hid in the, in the first five episodes was. They they really were keeping track of how much money she was spending, and they go, and now you're broke. Oh, and it became yeah, a plot cool. thing. And I was like, I can't. In in the midst of this fantastical musical show, they were being economically, <laughs> you know, real with to, as to what would happen. And I think you're right. Less people are going to accept the oh, they live in this insanely art designed department. And who cares what these twenty somethings do? No, that this isn't real. This is bullshit. Yeah, they they don't they don't like portray what real people's lives are like. Like no one ever opens their wallet and a fly comes out. <laughs> <laughs> they never they never look at their fellow man and see a, they them slowly turn into a steak that's talking. <laughs> when was the last time you saw a movie or a TV show where a character wore nothing but a barrel with straps? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's what real people go through. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well I also think that even when wealth is present media is more likely to acknowledge it now like with Bojack you spend the whole time watching it and being like man if I ever get really depressed again I hope I do it with a lot of money <laughs> right that sounds much better than my history of not having money and being a depressed being depressed there must be uh, a way to sort of arrange it so that I'm only depressed when I'm really wealthy yeah but Pat like when you're talking about like how we can sort of President, like the presidential eras kind of set a tone for the culture at large. And if you like read into, like you said, the Bush administration, it was either torture porn or like heroic depictions of torture, like Jack Bauer or whatever. And then there was a couple like Hollywood had a, a few sort of aborted attempts to like confront the Iraq war and sort of variously like, like, you know, movies like Stop Loss or like In the Valley of Ella or whatever that, you know, mostly were unremarked upon and just kind of didn't really go anywhere. I think it's interesting if you think about like the Obama era, wasn't that like really when like the superhero movie franchise yeah, really became absolutely. like a yes. huge thing? And I think I think that also reflected the national mood of sort of wanting to be saved by a heroic figure or becoming like yeah. less serious, sort of more childlike in a way. I, I remember I met Sergio Argones, Sergio Argones, the you know the guy that did Gru and all the yeah, little yeah. you know uh, marginalia stuff in Mad, and he yeah. was talking about superheroes because he would always draw superheroes kind of fat and silly. He never did anything serious. He would always, and I was like, hey, I love your stuff, but you've never done like a serious superhero because he said superheroes to me equal despair. It equals. I want something to come out of the clouds with yeah. a magic ring or, you know, eye beams and just fix it's all this stuff because I can't. It's from desperation. I can't do I, this. It's and, this candy-coated <laughs> desperation. Yes. I was wondering, like, why Wonder Woman has resonated so much culturally because, like, really, the 
the movie itself, it's just like, oh, imagine if a woman was like really strong. Because and feminism it, but, is stalled. Right. That's right. why. It, Culturally, it, because like we've <clears throat> achieved a sort of like cultural parity, but the wage gap is still there. The yeah. sort of social dynamics are still there. So they're like, well, fuck it. We'll just, we'll, we'll do blockbuster feminism and that will make up for the fact that it still kind of sucks in a unique Although way to be a woman. I, I will say about that movie, the two things I really liked about it was they were addressing what you just said, which is she is saving the world and, and the majority of men are still like, whatever, we could, I could have done that. You don't, you know, like no one's acknowledging her. And then they also do this great thing. It's a little, it really sort where she grows up on Themescria, this this island paradise where they've taught her a paradigm that is perfect, and then like a uh, like a homeschooled kid that then goes out in the world, it's like <laughs> oh this was bullshit. They were like even even my you know it, it's a way of saying yes feminism has some amazing ideals, but let's also look at them in the real world and then adjust you and, really and find a better to, way. You it's know. not useful if it's not integrative. Yes, exactly. And, it and has, we haven't been able to integrate these ideas you know, through uh, culture and the mediums that we've been trying to at this point because it's still, I mean, like the internet runs on female misery. Like clearly <laughs> feminism yeah. has not accomplished like what we thought it could. But also like people are just super nostalgic right now because like, I, th I think the Make America Great Again thing and, and all the nostalgia stuff is like coinciding. I saw I saw this picture of like, it was Gal Gadot at Comic-Con and it was like a six-year-old girl walking up to her. It was like someone's like tweet and it said, you, you think these movies aren't important? Look at this. And I was like, yeah, she's children children have never loved superhero <laughs> movies until now. There's she's in never, front of a girl. There's a girl there. But I, I, there was like this weird psychosis to it where people acted like, this was the first thing that like little girls ever had to enjoy. That was like, a, but it, I think it was like also psychosis of the prophecy failing of Hillary Clinton failing and this vision of the world they had being failed to implement, uh, having a failure to implement. And they're having to be like, as you said, this escape for most people, for most people culturally, it's going to be, you know, the a guy going crazy because they have no resources or like uh when they make the thriller movie about running out of the cartoon sauce but uh, <laughs> yeah for like great. for like the dead enders who really lost their minds by uh the death of clintonism and the death of like this type of liberalism i think wonder woman was a very reassuring security blanket to them. And they had to pretend it was politically significant in this way it really wasn't. Well, but also there's this obsession with girls now. We've given up on like adult women. They're like, look, we're all miserable. We're not going to be okay. What we have to do now is provide good role models because that's the problem is that women don't have role models. And as long as they have role models, they'll be fine. But the other thing, like that never rang true for me, partially because like, you know what? Generally, you can look around and see impressive women, even if they aren't particularly professionally successful. Like, that's a very bougie thing to say. You know, you're not going to have women to look up to unless they're literally a superhero. Exactly. But then on exactly. Yeah. A, yeah. a woman that is holding down an above minimum wage job, but still. No, they're not billionaires. They're not franchising out. But that is so impressive these days. We're, no one looks at that. I We're think, the real superheroes. Yeah. The small <laughs> business owners. Yeah. Yeah. They we started the supervillain of government regulation. <laughs> I, I think anyone who can wash their bed sheets more than once every two years is a superhero. <laughs> But like I don't know, I just back to this idea that like uh, sort of our pop culture has this kind of like delayed fuse effect for like what's going on politically. Mm -hmm. Felix, I'm fond of your idea that American culture couldn't really fully metabolize or like the Bush administration until Sons of Anarchy. Oh yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like Sons of Anarchy is like our displaced feelings about the Bush administration, like about uh, five or six years after. Allow me to explain. Uh, <laughs> cue Adam Curtis music. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, <laughs> during, we could never really, as you said, look at movies about the Iraq war or the war on terror, but we knew there was this mass death going on in the background and these good intentions. Right. So we thought that was how we had to process it, even though they weren't, but every movie about it bombed there thereafter though, during the Obama years, there was a show. It was a show about an individualistic man, a man with uh, 
with good intentions to civilize the world around him, but ended up getting thousands of people killed in his idiotic weapon <laughs> deals and schemes. And that man's name was Jack Steller. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we could not process directly like the victims of war crimes or the consequences of imperialism, but we could... The, the Bizlats and the One-Niners. We the, could yes, figure that out. We yeah. could figure that out, and we could figure out, uh, we could figure out imperialism as, oh, you know, well, we had the best of intentions, and we, we had a good plan, but, you know, uh, Jax's mom is a total fucking bitch. Uh, <laughs> Tara was being unfaithful. And yeah, that's that's why Jackson was the biggest name for boys in America in like 2010. No, the, yeah, the, the, the Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club was our like sublimated way of dealing with the Bush cabinet. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Ron, Ron Perlman was Dick Cheney. You know, Charlie, Bob, Charlie Human was, uh, was, was Bush. Bush. Yeah. 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 Bobby Elvis, Colin Powell. And uh, um, that's true. And T Tig is uh, Rumsfeld. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, I, uh, and then whoever, what was that prospect's name? That was um, Rove. They're just, everyone just pissing on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was Turd Blossom. Yeah. Uh, Lo uh, Alex Nichols, Sloan Option, also had another theory about displacing like that Bush or Trump figure of, of sort of patriarchal domination yeah. is that Tim Allen movies only appear, Tim Allen TV shows only appear in the absence of that figure. So in the in the cuddly '90s of you know I feel your pain Clinton you had home improvement then that show left just as Bush took office and then when Obama came in office that Last Man Standing show shows up where he's just yelling about safe spaces <laughs> uh, and then that show got canceled and, and a lot of these conservatives actually think it's some sort of liberal conspiracy to get rid of they're this. They're so mad about they're it. They're so mad about the cancellation of Last Last Man Standing. But what it really is is Trump's here. We don't need Last yeah, Man yeah. Standing anymore. It's it's superfluous. We already have Last Man Standing, and he's in the White House. Yeah. Tim Allen has actually gone on TV since then and said, like, the show is canceled because there's nothing more dangerous than, like, a funny, relatable, conservative male. Oh, yeah, yeah uh, Stephen Paddock <laughs> proved that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're, I don't know, not watching your drink, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't... Well, no, he's right, because... That thing doesn't exist. So if it does exist in this world, that means we've cracked through some <laughs> Lovecraftian level of chaos, <laughs> and the old ones are coming back. I don't know. I Tim mean, Allen is the gate. Yeah, the Tim is Allen is the key. <laughs> <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> There's nothing more relatable than narking on all your friends to avoid jail time for Come cocaine on, man. theft. Yeah, well, dealing. What, what, also, his second show was he was like a vlogger. He like like what? He worked oh at my God. He did like PR for a sporting goods store, but he was just he just he he made Vlog. vlogs. Yeah. Which yeah, I'm sorry, like you're you're a part you're a millennial, you're a Tim millennial. Allen. Yeah. You're a piece of shit millennial. But of course he's Instagram vlogging thing. and living in a house that is yeah. again overly art that no one yep. could afford. Yep. Can I for no reason can I tell you my really goofy Lovecraft story? Yes. Yeah. yes. Really Absolutely. quick. I years ago, I'm such a Lovecraft nerd, I took a gig at Lupo's in Providence just so I could, and it paid, I mean, it, it, to, to get the plane ticket and for what I was getting paid, it canceled each other out, but it was a free trip and I wanted to go to Swan Point Cemetery and visit Lovecraft's grave. Mm. So I take a cab during the day and it's a perfect, it was like light rain, kind of windy. I'm like, oh, this is so, oh, this is so perfect. Mm. So then the, the, the cab driver is driving me around Swan Point. I can't figure out where the grave is, where it is. And, um, so finally, and, and a couple times we kept passing this woman. She was like a like a park ranger type, or like the attendant in the in the the cemetery. And she's like this squat, um, like mid twenties black woman in her in her vest, standing by her car, you know. And we, I'm like, let me pull over and ask her. Can we just pull over here? He pulls over, and I'm I'm not exaggerating. I open the door. I step I step out of the car. You know, she looks at me for this length of time, and she goes, "You want that monster man?" <laughs> <laughs> and she just sort of pointed. <laughs> she looks right at me, like, "Oh yeah, one of these guys, right over there, man." <laughs> and I realize she's right near the Phillips family, like obelisk. Yeah. And that's what she does. She looks for nerds. Oh yeah. <laughs> right over there. She's you want professional that Cthulhu bullshit. Nerd, right over there. Professional nerd wrangler. She was. They that's need to the helicopter her into one of these Rick and Morty rides. <laughs> <laughs> one <laughs> ranger, one riot. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, nerds. 
Uh, you need the loser sauce over there. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I, of course, I went there, and there's, like, foreign coins on top of yeah. the I Am Providence and the little scraps of poetry and, you know, yeah. it, was, it was really eerie. and creepy. I actually, uh, over the summer, I went to my cousin's wedding, and I uh, it, literally I could see from my hotel, like, room balcony uh, a cemetery, Ernest Hemingway's grave in, Whoa. Uh, in, uh, in Idaho. Uh, and I went there, and it was a similar in, thing. Is that uh, Ketchum? Uh, no. Where's it's like it's in, it's in Sun Valley. I forget the name of the town, but... Uh, it was the same thing, and I walk in, and I'm, I'm looking for the Ernest Hemingway grave, and the park ranger's like, want to put a shotgun in your mouth? Do it over there. <laughs> I, uh, my favorite detail of his, of his death is that he bought that shotgun at Abercrombie & Fitch. Did he? From a, from a shirtless male model? Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really should. Bunch of shirtless dudes with a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> I went to, uh, I actually, I visited uh, Dean Koontz's grave. <laughs> and it's very haunted. Wow. It's, it's two-thirds the size energy. of Stephen King's grave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, did you want to play? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, re- I really do. Uh, Pat, and I want to share with you now, uh, uh, back to the uh, back to the lo- loser sauce gate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to play for you uh, now. Uh, uh, I found that we found this yesterday. This sadness is sadness jelly. I like to call it. <laughs> this is wait. the this is the best reaction we've se- I've seen to the the Rick and Morty uh, sauce gate. Hold on, let me get this. And uh, so if you look on this guy's timeline, he's like a, a vlogger, gamer type kid, and he was so enthusiastic about the sauce. He's, he was tweeting about it all day. <laughs> I'm also 100% certain that he is a time-shifted Michael Rappaport. Yeah, I, yeah. I like to call this, this kid Young Rappaport. Young Rappaport. Yeah. So let me tell you something, Josh A. I don't give a fuck about the song anymore. This motherfucking whole Szechuan sauce shit was terrible. The location they picked in Brooklyn said, Oh, yeah, we're going to have the sauce to post in the stickers. I go there, wait two hours. No, no sauce. We never said we were never picked to have the sauce. I don't even know why we're online, but we do have the stickers and the fucking posters. But you don't even know if you're going to get a poster or a sticker about Szechuan sauce. Fucking honey mustard. Go scratch your ass, McDonald's. What the fuck? <laughs> Apparently, they were giving out posters for their regular sauces. For the reg- okay. <laughs> First thing. That is that is my favorite Michael Tolkien film ever. <laughs> that was beautifully framed. He oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's a professional. These kids know how to do yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That was great. He's an yeah. auteur. That was the video that turned me on their side. Because if I went to McDonald's for any reason and 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 I got poor service and they fobbed off a honey mustard poster <laughs> to me, I would be. Gar- I'm just a fan. I'm just pissed. a fan of condiments in general. That was yeah. To have that poster framed. I, I've got. I've got a, I've got a I'm rare. Rick and Morty fan, really. I'm just a big fan of new condiments. <laughs> Condiments. I've got oh, a rare man. 1991 mustard. I, I wonder <laughs> how many people who actually got the, the, the sauce were just condiment fans. They weren't even Rick and Morty. Brooklyn, you should have done a vlog when you were in Chicago and they wouldn't serve you a Happy Meal. Oh, oh that's, this, is a, this is so unfortunate. <laughs> I, there's a lot of ageism at McDonald's these days. You often have to go in with a child to, to acquire the Happy Meal uh, or pretend it's for a child. You can't just be a drunk man who wants a, an interesting toy, who wants the Moana toy. And doesn't actually can't eat large portions because of a stomach thing. Because you're a bird. <laughs> we 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 we, we tried to get uh, we tried to get on the dark net for Virgil to get a child in short order, <laughs> and the hotel Wi-Fi was just slow. And it was like you know you know what I, you do I'll, is you go. Here's the secret: it, when if you're in DC, this is this is a life hack. You go to Comet Ping Pong first. Yeah. Then, yeah. The kid, then you go to McDonald's. Then I you'll get all the, want a the ones poster, you want. Though. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I got really so excited weird. about that's, them. Too. That's pickup artistry. But I think, all right, yeah. think about how upset and angry and and disappointed the people who didn't get the sauce were. T- think of that level of upset and, and yeah, sadness. Yeah. It compares in no way to the monumental, soul crushing oblivion of ennui that must have been felt by everybody who actually got to taste it. Because there's yeah. no way it was any good. Oh, yeah. no. There's nothing no way it was any good. It's fucking McDonald's dipping sauce. What you want. That's, yeah. Yep, it's yep. like that That's, That would destroy my brain. That's to wait true. two hours for this shit and then it's like, oh yeah, it's like sweet, sweet and sour sauce that yeah. you get at a, a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, that's interesting, Matt, because you think we would have heard from someone who got the vaunted you know, chemical slurry. Oh no, slurry. they would take that to their fucking grave. The ones yeah. who got it, they'll never admit it was shitty. Um, no. Victor Frankl wrote that in pursuit of meaning... <laughs> 
uh, is where we truly find happiness. And so I don't think the point of the sauce really matters. Second of all, Charles Murray posited that if IQs were on a graph going up, Rick and Morty fans, uh, they have a high cluster around 110 to uh, 180 genius level. And so you combine those two things, they actually, the point isn't the sauce. The point is the journey they went on. Yeah, I, I love yeah, the, the the sop of the condiment poster so yeah, much. That's I, amazing. My brother is a, an insane hockey fan, and one year for Christmas, I didn't know what to get him, and I got him a poster, and it's just this kind of generic drawing of it, and just says hockey, like, <laughs> and then he just. <clears throat> He openly said, this is a shitty gift. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, this sucks. He goes, I, there's teams I follow. You could have asked me. I would have liked that. I went, no, I mean, you like hockey. He goes, Patton, this is like if I got you a poster that just said books. <laughs> to hang in your room. I read books. Actually, books. What, what I, it, listeners out there, we, we just got an office. What I would like for the office, if someone can track down, it was if, if, you, go to, if you go to libraries, sometimes you can still see them. Yes. There is this, there is this promotion that, that, that like the U.S. library system, I got yeah, association of librarians with books. Yeah. It was just um, celebs reading books and it just said read. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I want I the one the with Nicolas Cage where he's reading Siddhartha. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, during <laughs> during the during like the Kaepernick thing, where like people were proving a point by burning their merchandise, there were a lot of guys who were just burning shirts and hats that only said NFL on them. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. And uh, I just, I mean, I want to I want to see the internal life of somebody who, like, three years ago, was like, "Yeah, I just really want that hat that says NFL. I just love the league. That's it." Maybe they bought it. Maybe they awesome. bought it for it. Like, they're not really. They were never really committed to the NFL, but they are committed to effigy, but like not that yeah. accurately. They're just huge effigy fans. <laughs> you know, you know, just, like, the, NFL, the NFL hats are cheaper. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, cheaper exactly. to not have a branded thing on there. And yeah, then yeah. Yeah. it's always a anyway. materialist explanation. I have to always say. I buy the officials' uniforms because yeah. I just yeah. like the rules. You know, <laughs> Look, I say I think that, uh, yeah. that Slava Zizek is mostly full of shit at this point in his career. But <laughs> I, no, he is the one man your... I want to hear talk about this because his Lacanian analysis yes. could not be more perfectly suited to the, this yep. sad pursuit of this. This, this you see, this, this sauce is it is the unrealizable, <laughs> libidinal <laughs> desire that which structures reality but could not be engaged with. Personally. The sauce is the lacuna in the center of the desire. Yes. Yes. That, that it is video, the unreachable middle. Yeah. That video of him in the Criterion Vault. Oh, that's picking good. Picking out his favorite films. And I, you realize, it's what I like very much. Yeah. yeah. But but it's just it's films that just make him more. He likes films that would would upset other people. That's why he likes them. Like, clearly that's what he's, he's picking. Very edgy. I, am, I mean, that's his I, thing. He's, he's an antagonistic person. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, sick of, I'm, sports. I'm sick yeah. of people like giving him airtime just because he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to spout this old cliche, but but how could you imagine the Cheswan sauce energy harnessed into a small congressional race yeah. where you could literally flip you I mean that you could flip districts with this energy, but how but how do you make a congressional race which is a grueling day-to-day -day thing make it seem like a fun, nostalgic mission. Well, I first of all, we do a, that. I think if you had a candidate that was at least maybe one-tenth as emotionally validating as Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah. You need I, I don't think they should set you on sauce to the polls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may not be Rick and Morty, but you need an IQ of a certain level to enjoy me. <laughs> I... <sighs> What if candidates have to be nostalgic characters? You have to run as uh, as yeah. as Rick. It's the way it you goes. Have to, you have to run as uh, Uncle Jesse or something. Yeah. Or frame the race as some kind of like I'm Burt Reynolds in Cannonball Run. <laughs> but like, but I think that we're past what... the point of metaphor though. So you would have to dress up like him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's not a joke. Yeah. You, but that's going to happen. Yes. That is what Donald Trump did he though. He's yeah. dressed as an '80s businessman. Yes. Yes. I'm. I'm. Remember the cocaine days when everyone was making all that money. Oh, that's that me. was fun. It's me. Yeah. And when when it, yeah. when all his ba when half of his like elderly base is dead in 2020, he's <laughs> he's going to go like I'm Nickelodeon Gak. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, I I can't get out of your carpet, okay? <laughs> Look, that's I, I I actually don't really know what Gak is. 
It's like it was. It's like slime. Oh, it's it. Nickelodeon. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, okay, okay. kids well, Pat, love slime. Patton, uh, this is what yeah. Matt was musing about. We did a political panel yesterday, and he was musing that the 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 Rick and Morty outrage people are the spearhead of yeah. a new militant movement because. Right after, you know, right, right as all of this stuff was going down, they were fashioning hashtags, boycott McDonald's. They were, they were contacting yeah, McDonald's energy. customer service, much like people fucking contact, the, yeah. you know, Lisa Murkowski. Because really, like if if this system cannot get you fake nostalgic sauce from a cartoon. Then it has no efficacy. It has yeah. no advantage. It has the no one thing appeal. It, promised. it was the, the one, thing, one it promised. thing it promised. Absolute frippery. Absolute <laughs> marginalia. Just billions of dollars of carbon and 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 fucking uh, fossil fuels being put to the use of making absolute shit, useless garbage that we are able in our you know distressed mindscape to clamp onto and feel. Give meaning to and find like turn them into talismans. We turn this like this just refuse into talismans, and you can't even give us the little gigas. You can't even give us the little the little trinkets. You know, it's it's like it's like if the it's like if a bunch of medieval peasants had gone to a reliquary to see like Pope Eustace's shin bone, yeah, and it wasn't there, yeah, they would burn down the fucking cathedral, <laughs> yeah. I think they used to give us like you know it's like the capuchin monkey experiments. They used to give us at least the terry cloth we used to, mother. We had the, we now had they've the taken we had away at least the terry cloth mother, and now yeah. we don't provided have no nourishment, but it did provide comfort. And yeah. now we no longer have the terry cloth I think mother. It could, does, wait a minute, does this all collapse when Ready Player One comes out? <laughs> <laughs> because that is the then we're done at that point. That's nostalgia. In that movie, it looks like the monster is nostalgia. It looks like he's made a Jaws movie where the Shark is nostalgia. Yeah, it's going to eat your brain. You will be yeah. destroyed by it. You'll you'll be by the end of it. You'll just be a gibbering maniac like yeah. Sam Neill at the end of the, uh, <laughs> the mouth of madness is going. I recognize that. Recognize that. I know that. That's from. I know what that's from. Yeah. And that's all you are anymore. You're just a machine that only purpose is to recognize things that it's seen before. Yeah. I'm more. I'm more afraid that uh, his follow-up novel Armada is just the plot of the Last Starfighter. And, no, it and is. Nobody's noticed that. It is. Nobody's talking about this, folks. <laughs> folks, how stupid are we? <laughs> there was a movie called The Last Starfighter already. I'll tell you one thing that uh, I was not ready for after the one, the first punch of the Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce gate was to then see Marvel a lie. What with North in oh my God, yes. 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 is going on? What the fuck? That's just <laughs> what I, happened. That's right. Marvel. Marvel announced a partnership with Northrop Grumman to create like a group of superheroes who were going to fight with the Avengers, and and they are and it's Northrop Grumman employees yes. as superheroes, and it's like and their it's, power is I the think technology. That people are doing mergers in fantasy worlds. I swear yeah. to God. And their and their powers would be the mach- the the, the uh, defense technology created by Northrop right, yeah. Grumman. They, and and it's, this isn't some like one off thing like a like the the Avengers meet Shoney right. Bear for Shoney's or when, like, this is or when Spider Man would ongoing, eat the hostess cookie in the back of the book. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, this is going to be an ongoing. Yeah, yeah. This isn't one of those host things like, how do we defeat the trickster? Well, Northrop Grumman, can, you know, and then he's... Ha- but, we just drone strike the Green Goblin. Yeah, no, they literally, this is going to be in the universe. Yeah, it's their, we have new characters. But the thing is, it's like, it's really just this, cur- it's one part of this, this, the Trump era, I think the one thing that co- defines it culturally is just metaphors dying, metaphorical yeah. language dying, the real sort of rising to the surface all, all of the artifice melting because what was yeah. Tony Scott, Tony Stark originally, if not sort of a Northrop Grumman dream, like a fucking oh defense contractor who uses all of this high technology stuff to save the world, do yeah. signature strikes. The pilot is the jet. Right. Pick oh, the- come. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're taking, because that was sort of, it was on the ideological level, like pro, pro defense state, pro military industrial complex. We can use this stuff for good. Yeah. Technology is our friend. We have to engage with the world by blowing it up. And now we've taken that that subtext and made it text because yeah. now it's literally North of Grumman. It's a real, there's a, Some, one of the pictures they had, it was fantasy and it was Stark headquarters and next to it said reality and it was North of Grumman headquarters. Some lefty, they fucking put that out there. Some lefty cultural critic who just handed in his 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 big manuscript <laughs> showing that the, the propaganda value for empire of modern comic books is just so pissed yeah. right now. Just threw it into a fireplace. Oh my God, wait a minute. What if, hang on, wait, I'm sorry. I might have been wrong earlier when I said that all this, uh, uh, post-capitalism economic anxiety is defining our pop culture. Folks, we have a correction. I think, no, 
It is a lack of abstract thought. Trump, and we've you, you've talked about this about he has no. Uh, th- there's uh, there's no abstract thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's no. Um, if they say we need transparency in the wall, he th- thinks th- you yeah, have to look yeah. through the wall. So he's a hyper literalist. Maybe that is what's going to happen. There is there will be no more irony yeah. or meta distance to anything. It'll just be right there. Yes. He, you know that. That's really what I've felt since he won. Is just the dissolving of metaphorical no, language. Yeah. Like that. Like that whole allegory. All of that is dead. We just have this weird concrete background. Well, yeah, I mean it's oval, so you can't really. Yeah, I mean if someone's oh God, looking in the was, window, that one, oh, I yeah. still think about that one sometimes. There's no George way to, W. Bush said uh, you can know where to hide. And he's like, yeah, it's you, there's because, no corners. Or anything, if someone's out of the window, if there's somebody in the window, I, mean, I guess I was in the, and he goes, well, he meant it all comes back to you. I understand that. Uh, it's a world. It's sort of like the invention of lying. Only instead yes. of we can't lie, we cannot use any kind of abstract language. The invention of metaphor. Yeah, we're all Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> oh my God, I'm my, I'm reading those to my daughter these right now. She, she loves those. Used to it because that's, Amelia, that's yeah. the future. It's gonna be like oh my Ponte, God, I'm preparing her. It's gonna be like Ponty Pool, only you're just gonna lose all of your metaphors. Amelia oh. Bedelia was a damn documentary. Yeah, <laughs> Amelia <laughs> Idiocracy. I think yeah, yesterday's yeah. Michael Michael, Mi- Michael Flynn is the most Amelia Bedelia out of the entire administration. I feel it's gonna be adorable. It's gonna be the most adorable nuclear holocaust you've ever seen. <laughs> Michael Flynn is avoiding nuclear holocaust by lobbying for literally every gov- every government on yeah. earth. And, you know? and the thing is, it's and and the real the real scary part is that it is it is fucking his whole this whole weird uh hallucinatory hyper reality is really spreading even beyond Trump because I made fun a couple weeks ago of the fact that when he was yelling at the NFL players he had three tweets in a row one was NFL players they need to stand disrespectful then if North Korea keeps talking smack, we're going to kill them all. Then, yeah, NFL players, what the hell? Mm. He just, like, he just it's sandwiched. It's all the same to him. Yeah, it's you all the same. It's called multitasking. <laughs> you learned about it from Oprah. But 40 the, chess, man. We're, we're going back to the Szechuan <laughs> Gate, uh, our uh, 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 journalist, uh, Kurt Eichenwald. Kurt Eichenwald. Friend of the show. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday had a tweet where he said, can no one stop POTUS? He is, he is going to launch a first strike against North Korea. We need him to be constrained. An hour later, he replies to McDonald's. <laughs> says, rep- you know, hey. what is?" He yeah. replies to the official McDonald's account, which they're... they're, they're to they, the they Ronald to McDonald. They said, uh, McDonald's, the official McDonald's account said, the best fans in the multiverse showed us what they got today. We hear you, and we're sorry not everyone could get some super limited Szechuan. <laughs> and Kurt responds, wow, Who's getting fired for this bonehead move? Jerry? I don't care either way, but I know Rick and Morty fans are hardcore and thousands would show. He is the first mainstream media figure to endorse the, the nascent Rick and Morty militant <laughs> He's revolutionary He's going to tie it to being a poster. But yeah, an hour before that, he was worried that we were going to have a first strike at North Korea and nuclear uh, Armageddon. Rick and then the same it's the same thing as the fucking Szechuan sauce. Rig and Morty fans will be the the soccer moms or Rahawa dads yeah. of the 2020 <laughs> election. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt. Mark Penn needs to be get on that. It's like we got the NASCAR uncles, we got the Rick and Morty incels and we're going to get that coalition and we're going to win back the White House. Kurt Eichenwald uh you know, he's breaking out his uh tour, his uh dark net use. <laughs> he's going he's getting back in the game. <laughs> He's going undercover as a child to email McDonald's. I try. I I tried to get out, but they pulled me back in. The tentacles pulled me back in. I mean, also, Kurt. This is bugs me a lot, but Kurt made a Rick and Morty reference in that tweet, and yeah. he, kind oh, of bung- he bungled it though. It was like, who's getting fired for that, Jerry? Well, Jerry, as not- if Jerry works at McDonald's. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Awesome. What, uh, it doesn't work. Well, I just, I, my favorite part of it is that he clearly shows he's a fan of the show. Yeah, because he's a freaking high he's IQ. A fan of animation. He's a fan in general. of all kinds well, of animation. Yeah. animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, mean, I, I actually the, do the think tentacles it's a fine of animation show. will always yeah. pull you to that wonderful. He also has to say. I don't care either way. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know what, Kurt? I bet you were in that line. Well, you? what I like is he, he, <laughs> he's, a, he's those clearly a fan of the show, and he's like, well, you know, they are the smartest people. Too. <laughs> <laughs> he's absolutely drafting a lawsuit against McDonald's. True fact stated is making the connection between Trump and Putin and the sauce. It's like, uh, we actually have intel. We have intel. It's the we Sino-Russian have, sauce yeah, connection. We have, <laughs> we have, we have sync and human indicating that Putin... 
purchased all of our reserves of uh, of, of, <laughs> Szechuan. of of Szechuan peppers, <laughs> making it impossible China. for McDonald's to fulfill its uh, re- its pledge to its customers and sowing more division and chaos in America. Folks, which it's is all China. Does. Matt, it's like, China. It, it's Russia. <laughs> this is like this is going to be an example of one of these things where we will. Like we will another thing yeah. to being. I, yeah. There is gonna be like a mega thread on Twitter connecting Russia to Szechuan yeah. game. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Probably yep. in T minus one hour, yep. someone's gonna do it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen sixty yeah. Sino Soviet <laughs> split. Follow along. <laughs> You know, the one thing, and maybe you guys can reassure me because I do have my paranoid moments too, where if, if you look at Trump, and I, oh, I hate that I'm even going down this road, but if you look at Trump psychologically, he's so clearly this guy that every new thing he gets money-wise will make him happy, and it does not. Yeah. And maybe we will start a nuclear war because he craves the release of annihilation. Oh, he does. Th- th- there is no, his that death totally... drive is incredibly strong. Yeah, exactly. He's basically admitted it. You remember that that interview years ago where he said, my favorite song, It's there. is that all there is? Because you get my money and you make a deal and then you think, is that all there is? Okay, well then that's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Because somebody with that, I, I know, I, I've known people... hunger. Yeah, I, I've known people just at, at, at the, the, the level of show business, forget world leaders or billionaires, that, that if I get this TV series, if I get this, you know, and then they're just miserable. Yeah. You know, no matter what they... I, I've had friends who've had... They'll get a sitcom and they're like, it's the number, f- I'm number five. What the fuck? <laughs> this is bullshit. And then like, well, you, you, and then they get to be number one. You go, you, you're the number one sitcom. They go, yeah, how fucking long is this going to last? <laughs> and then it, it's number one for nine weeks. Then it drops number two and they go, I told you. And they're just never. So imagine that metastasized into Trump. Yeah. This 70 year old. Yeah. Uh, who, who is who, so uh, narcissistic. that And miserable. The thing, the thing that keeps presumably and the thing that stopped us from dying in the cold war is people really in moments of high tension reflecting on the actual cost of what that would be and mean. reflecting on the future those and the- people who would die mean literally nothing to him no one outside his, of himself means anything his family literally means nothing, mean to, nothing him. to him he he raised his kids to try to um, bully one of his daughters out of the will. Yeah. He would throw the others under the bus in a second. No, yeah. He would want, in a really creepy way, he wants to destroy the world so it's just him and Ivanka. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, no, that's, he is, that's I mean, his fantasy. Like there, is that, the, there is that narcissistic thing within all of us, I think, of not wanting to miss anything when you die. Like that. That's why you crave the apocalypse. Yes. That's why apocalypse is so culturally relevant. Because, because we all die so no at the them. end. You don't want to die. And that's the ultimate narcissist nightmare. It, it, it's the Louis C.K. joke of, is, is there life after death? Yeah, there is. You're just not part of it. <laughs> it just keeps going, and that's no, that what drives sucks. people no, crazy. Yeah, because I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to die, and then there's going to be fucking flying cars and shit. <laughs> yeah, after I die, and right. like it's going to be Star Trek, and I don't get to see it. That's bullshit. All has to end with me. But to have the yeah. ability to make that happen and right. be as narcissistic and shallow and yeah. deeply miserable as Trump, it is scary. Somebody accidentally said the phrase to him every hundred years, all new people. And that <laughs> is like, wait a minute, are people going to forget me? No, that's impossible. It, it ends with me. Yeah. This, all, this entire evolution, yeah. the whole, also it ends with Donald it's, Trump. It's the only way to validate his existence. <laughs> it's the only, yeah, because yeah. nothing else has. Yeah, well, because he became president and he thought that'd be great, but people are still mean to him. Well, very yeah. unfair. Yeah. And, and he's so, only capable of very brief libidinal delight, not yep. actual happiness. He's, exactly, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably the luckiest most successful American of all time who fell ass backwards into the, the most, leader of the, the free the world. And he's still totally anhedonic. between ability and reward, basically, oh, yeah. of well, all time. It's just like once a week, they give him like a flag or something to cut or something to sign or, or he can drive a truck and then he gets excited for like three minutes. He's pure joy and then it's gone. gone. Sitting in that truck. And all the people that he wants around him do not want anywhere. Like, it, it's it's Ted Nugent and it's these shitty country bands that he hates. By the way, it's not that he wants... Eddie Vedder to be hanging out with him. He hates all music. He doesn't care. Yeah. He just well, whoever's the top selling. Well, I the want them seller. to hang out. Yeah. That's well, all well, I care about. This is interesting. I mean, like, I mean, this is like I, I wanted to bring up uh, the fact that he was complaining the other day and seeming to imply that like Congress should get involved <laughs> in like mandating equal jokes like I'm that are nice night. to him on it's late so night TV. Amazing. So he's like, a, like a, 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 the fairness he wants a comedian fairness doctrine yes. <laughs> for, wow. for late night TV shows. And I really hope Congress gets him. I want, I want, I want to see that like, show. That they, show would be, I don't watch any of those shows, but if on Kimmel or Seth Meyers, they have to do a Trump joke and then they have to turn to the other camera and be like, <laughs> 
Uh, unemployment is down three and a half percent. I was I was thinking more like it would be a New Deal, but for like Steven Crowder specifically. <laughs> It's like, all right, we're spending $30 billion a year on dresses for Steven Crowder to, <laughs> to prove that the liberals are gay or something. Okay. No, I love like how he's big... so, I love how Crowder is so obsessed with his hatred of Amy Schumer and you can trace it. It's so simple. Yeah. She was on yeah. Red Eye with him and said, uh, by the way, you're not a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> she just said it and she wasn't even being mean. She's like, if I, if I went fishing once a year, I couldn't go, oh, I'm also a fisherman. <laughs> You, you go perform. He's the Mother 13 of comedians. Have you ever heard that sketch on The Best Show? It's this band called Mother 13. They just perform for corporate events. <laughs> They're just huge. And, and like, oh, are you kidding? We were at the Pringles Earthlink Summer Slam Jam. We were, we were on the third stage, which is the stage outside the parking lot. And they're my, they have no faith. No one's actually going to see them. They just so, so, of course, the person that quietly... Finally, just no. You're actually not a comedian, anyway. And then goes back to talking about other things. Yeah, every single of course he's going to be obsessed. Audi- every single audience that Steve Crowder has ever performed for was bust in. But yeah, from bust a retirement in. home, or they were there for something else anyway. Yeah, they weren't there to see him. Yeah. They're well, like, you, oh, before the thing starts, you came. To, here's this guy. Or if you've seen him, like he does do gigs at like <laughs> colleges and stuff, but it's like. It's brutal. It's just like oh, I watch all of those. I watched the O'Reilly like monologue series shall we say yeah. uh and like they'll they would turn to shots of the crowd it's impossible to find now he had everyone who saw it killed yeah <laughs> so i might go missing they die they kill yeah. themselves that, that's, why, that's, that's why he liked uh his hospice care audiences <laughs> <laughs> literally every two weeks new people <laughs> and also what what i love about all these guys all these failed comedians have become they metastasize showbiz failure with hatred of the left mm-hmm. yeah. because it, but, but what was so hilarious is it wasn't showbiz failure. It was, they weren't immediately successful. Yeah. Like when you, my first four years of comedy was just death. Like it was, it was not because you have to work at it yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And the fact that they, they tried something and weren't immediately rewarded and they went, Oh, well then f- I'm conservative. Like it, all these guys, yeah. you can see it over and over and over again. So they accuse libs of being that, Oh, it's a gratification culture. Y- yes. Well, your participation trophy. Guess what? You got to pull up your bootstraps. We're a little bit harder, but as yeah. soon as they don't personally right. get their own fulfillment through their their horrible comedy right yeah. away, it's like, oh, this is the libs' fault. And, and, and I remember a lot of these guys when I was starting out in D.C. back in the '80s. <clears throat> a lot of these guys have now become conservative commentators or people that I have to block on Facebook because really? they didn't quite push through and became like, yeah, well, fuck Hollywood. Yeah, but because that's all- the thing is, you can imagine if you have in your mind been done wrong by the entertainment industry. Totally. That you're going to identify that with the left because they're all liberals. And yes. then they're like, oh, there's uniquely bad elites. But it's like, actually, yes, they're all scumbags who run Hollywood, but yeah. everybody who runs everything is a scumbag. Right. It's like the Harvey Weinstein <laughs> thing. Like all these oh smug, God. all these smug conservatives, like, yeah, look at all, yeah, Harvey Weinstein's a monster who is abetted by this awful system yeah. where also, if you're at the top, you can do whatever you want. But that's true of literally every yeah. Industry. But also, um, yeah, Harvey Weinstein is a fucking monster who's not in control of nukes. He makes <laughs> pretend shows. Yes, he's doing awful things. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I believe the women that are coming against him. I, I tweeted the yesterday. I'm like, hey, MAGA douchebags. I believe the women that are accusing yeah. your guy is still a, a, a rapist <laughs> and a predator, and he's the fucking president. Yeah. Yeah. Does that you don't well, see that, the difference? What's so crazy between... is, is that they think like his response was, "Oh yeah, I, I'm totally not surprised." When he, they asked Trump about Weinstein, he said, "Doesn't surprise me at all." And the thing is, these guys like to think that he's some sort of crusader against this predatory elite like Pizzagate people. But he, time and again, has said, oh, yeah, those sex perverts, I was their friend for many years. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's There's like, do you think that... of pictures of him with Harvey Weinstein. That, do you think that it was like a, it was like a fucking uh, uh, infernal affairs thing where he went deep undercover <laughs> on rich <laughs> perverts so that he affairs. could become president and then turn the tables on them by, like, making a catty comment after they get pr- <laughs> brought down by other Christ. people? I was he's just as much of a... Pr- he has yeah. a human zoo, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is... I found I found this I found this article from like 1998 about Jeffrey Epstein and the only poll quote in there is from Donald Trump and he goes Jeffrey is a great friend of mine it's rumored he likes women even younger than me and it's like he's like just openly being like yeah I do Pizzagate it's great <laughs> I was uh, I had I was having deep thoughts in the shower the other day about this so like you know Weinstein or like Roger Ailes or Donald Trump and everyone's just sort of going back and forth about like Democrats and Republicans who has who has more sexual predators as major donors or figures in their media and I was like I, it struck me for a moment that it's been almost 
just completely evaporated from our sort of like public imagination and consciousness that Dennis Hastert was third in line to the presidency for like almost a decade. He was the longest (laughs) serving GOP uh, House Speaker of the House ever. And just Holy a shit. huge. Pervert. Okay, okay. Oh, let me, yeah. let me, Shomo Maximum. I want to defend my fellow Illinois. Uh, <laughs> and, okay. so, and wrestler. And wrestler. Yeah. Okay, so, so, okay. We were just talking about Wonder Woman and how good it is for girls to have heroes. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're a morbidly obese uh, child molester? <laughs> Who do you have to look up to? This is why these people are important. Representation yeah. is important. Yeah, really it's is. like I too can sell subs or be Speaker of the House. Little in- yeah. Illinois inside baseball we will not uh, be free until we have a diehard where a pedophile is the hero and, <laughs> and, his, and, his, and his pedophilia is what saves the day little little <laughs> little illinois inside baseball yeah uh hastard had one uh, very big patron and it was jim oberweiss literally an ice cream baron <laughs> I, 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 right, man. This, yes. is a, this is a roll doll story. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. I'm just oh imagining. Uh, I'm just imagining uh, the pedophile John McClane jumping off the roof of the Nakatomi Tower with a bunch of nappies tied together, <laughs> <laughs> crashing through the window. So now, let me ask you guys because I, you know, as a, a political, but it's a comedic, it's a comedic podcast, but it's also very, very political because I know all the writers on Veep and how. I mean, you do the show, you record the show once a week, you twice record a week. twice a yeah. week. Yeah. So are there things where if you're covering something that's just broken, but you know with Trump, something will happen and then wait two days yep. and it goes the opposite direction. Yep. So has that been kind of built into the the comedy and the discussion at this point? Like, and we know that this will also go, because th- it's exhausting to keep up with this shit. We try he not is, to react too quickly. Yeah, he, he is sour cream in a sauna. You can't, <laughs> it, it just turns so immediately. You gotta wait, 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 wait. I've okay, never boom. heard that phrase. Oh, oh he's, <laughs> Pat, Pat is saying That's that what he, they used to call me in college. Sour like, cream in a sauna. Pat, Pat, Pat is saying that he's thick. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, the thing is, is that you sort of, it would be, if we had to, contextualize every story in what like the most recent iteration and, right. and knowing that it was going to change in the next five we would have a hard time the good news is that we sort of assume that the audience has a baseline context for everything we talk good. about yeah. and we sort of let that do the work and so we basically just respond to what is happening in front of us also yeah. also we don't really respond right away instead we uh make up something Way more fucked up and stupid, and then that happens the next day. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. actually like, like pedophile make... diehard, right? Yeah. 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 Literally, and, was... and we're on time. Yeah. yeah, when we often get scooped on those predictions. Uh, I just want to make one for the record that I think Trump will comment on the Szechuan sauce thing, <laughs> <laughs> and and I think it will lead him to watch Rick and Morty, and it will become a flowers for Algernon type thing, and becomes a genius president, <laughs> <laughs> and he solves all of our problems, but he becomes worse in a different aspect. Oh yeah, he's gonna be. And I fucking love science guy. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Oh yes. my He's God. Going yes. He's going to read Neil deGrasse Tyson over He's the other direction. He's global warming by building some sort of machinery. He's going to become yeah. an Imgurian. Yeah. Oh, he will be an Im- He's going to post all the Imgur memes that uh, me and Virgil have hate read for five years. Uh, like the condescending. Because you're inv- smart. Yes. Folks, uh. folks, there's a comic out there. You got to check it out. It's a comic. It's called XKCD. <laughs> <laughs> it's got. All the stuff, it's amazing. They're stick figures, but they know a lot of stuff. <laughs> Condolences to the control alt delete man for <laughs> losing, losing, losing his beautiful infant. <laughs> we need to fix Obamacare. <laughs> uh, I think that's as uh, good a place oh as any God. to uh, to wrap it up. Uh, Patton, thanks so much thanks for joining us. So happy yeah. to be here. You have this no is idea. A lot of fun, man. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.